Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. I'm horrible at doing this, but if you would like to support the show... Patreon.com slash DangerCat69. You get this episode earlier than all the rest. Those listening on Patreon are 24 hours ahead of you on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Great way to support the show. And you get another episode every week. I'm horrible at... I I feel gross uh, doing that. You know, like self-promoting yourself to others. Be like, hey, give me your money for more of this. It just, I, I need to get better at it. I understand, like, some people are really good at it. They just promote the hell out of themselves, and they're doing quite well. And, and, and I started thinking to myself, it's about time, you know, I ask for your money. And uh, in, in exchange, you get an, another hour of this nonsense that I spew. We got a great fan question ahead of us today. Um, a, a listener... His cousin fucked his cousin's wife, who is now, uh, the cousin is now deceased in there. You know what? It's good. Stick around later in the episode. We're going to cover that. Another uh, extra episode available on patreon.com slash dangercat69. Great way to support the show and uh, keep this bullshit going. Um, but yeah. What a what a time we live in right now. Uh, zero controversy out there. There's no there's no problems. We we have nothing to be angry about at this moment in time. Um, <clears throat> you can't even say that with a straight face these days. You know what I mean? The whole world is crumbling down before us in front of our eyes. You turn on the media, and this is the, this is why. News stations are becoming less credible as the days go on. I was watching a clip on CBC, a very, very trustworthy news source here in Canada, the Canadian Broadcast Corporation, who, you know, took a $600 million, I believe, grant. Do they call it a grant? Funding. We'll call it funding. $600 million of funding given from the Canadian government to the CBC, and they write. This is why nobody fucking tunes into that garbage no more. <clears throat> I believe it was the uh, MLA for the area of Ottawa is being interviewed, and as she's talking, she's expressing her feelings of the trucker convoy or the occupation that's taking place in Ottawa right now, and her words just contradicted everything that was on the television screen that they were showing. There was like two talking heads and then you know how they have uh, media playing on the right hand side while the, the two talk. It was hilarious. There's violence in the streets. These people are hateful. And in the meantime, as, as she's spewing this nonsense, right? They're showing these guys inflating a despicable me bouncy castle so that way the kids have something to do these mean hateful racist misogynistic transphobic anti-gay anti-progressive assholes out in ottawa are so evil and twisted that they are inflating bouncy castles so kids can enjoy their time down there all right this is her words not mine okay i find it rather interesting right now you'd want to know like the canadian entertainment industry is awful our media is even worse you know you watch canadian television anything produced in canada you can tell because it's fucking awful the scripts suck the the camera work sucks the acting sucks even the acting on our news sucks ass our politicians are are basically d-list actors in LA fighting to get a Charmin commercial. That's who they are right now. 
anybody is just looking for any piece of attention and it's the most pathetic narratives that they run on. It's hilarious. I can sit back and giggle to myself. You know, it's it's a perfect time for comedy right now. If you look at everything and have a laugh, like you can laugh about this, congrats. Because it is hilarious out there. It is complete. Just, it's a parody. It's, it's a complete parody of itself. You know? And I got, you know what? Uh, first off, let's get something out of the way. I got to sit here with egg on my face. Because what did I say? I said... The trucker convoy is going to be exactly like the yellow vest one. No politicians are going to talk with them, speak with them, of the Liberal Party, of course. And I was right about that, so I get one check mark. But I said it was going to be a two-week, maybe even a week. Nobody's going to pay attention. And now they're two weeks into this, and i got to sit here with egg on my face. And I'm not saying that I'm not for it, because I like when people... Uh, disrupt a little bit, uh, disrupt the public, disrupt, there's pushback. I like that. I like when people are challenged when they're in positions of power. I do. I've, I've even liked when I was a younger lad is like challenging my foreman's bosses and just push them a little, joke with them, see how far I could take things. And I like this. This is why I like this convoy is because they're doing that. We've lost that, you know? I will say, I do have to admit, I was wrong. I, I didn't think that this was going to work in the beginning. I was f fucking hopeful. Don't get me wrong. And what did I... I was right about another thing. We're not going to take it. The fucking crowd was singing it. And I get a video of this sent to me. And I got to say, when you know, you know. Okay? When you know, you know. But here we sit, two weeks into this thing, and we got politicians backpedaling, don't know, what, uh, blah, 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 went into hiding, went into fucking hiding, you know? One thing we do have to stop doing, though, is comparing Canada to Nazi Germany, okay? We got we to gotta stop doing that, you know, because that was a perfect ending, you know? If anything... If, if, if we were like Nazi Germany, we're looking at a perfect ending, all right? Old, old Schittler himself goes into an underground bunker and blows his lid off. We could only dream of that. And I'm only kidding here, right? I don't wish uh, any suicide upon any, but I'm just saying if we're going to compare the two, at the end of the day, if, if somebody just so happens... To be biting down on the barrel of a fucking shotgun, right? And decides to suck start one and end it all. What a comparison, right? Storybook ending. We've heard it once. And, and if, if it's going to play out that way, ah, eh, right? <laughs> it's a wild take, hack. What are you doing up there? You losing your mind? Yes. Yes, but I do. I do enjoy this. I and I, I fucking. I think it's insane. The people that are like counter protesting are hilarious. You know, these this this right here is the full circle coming to bite you in the ass because it's been two years. The people that are counter protesting uh, usually are the ones, and I'm generalizing, right? But. Let's be honest, I assume most of them have screamed at somebody for walking down the wrong uh, I, or wrong way down the aisle in the grocery store. They've probably yelled at people over their mask or, you know, got into arguments on what they think is right. And I'm not saying the other side is better for this, but I'm just saying that it's been two years of being berated by these assholes. And now, and now we figured out how to completely irritate them back. It's just, it's, it comes full circle. It just so happens to be an air horn on a fucking international 
blaring for two weeks. So take everything that some of these people have done for two years, you know, where's your mask? Wrong way. You're walking down the wrong way. Where's your mask? We're at capacity. Now, it's being delivered in a different form of disruption. Now, your eardrums, like ours, for the past two years, are hearing you fucking... In our ear, right? Pointing, doing the finger point. Now you have to listen to fucking honk honk for two weeks. And I like it. I like the fact that people are irritated. You've been irritating people as well. So now, all those years of you being a cunt have fucking come back to bite you in the ass. And now you got to listen to fucking Trucker Joe from Saskatchewan rip his air horn for fucking what 18 hours i imagine 24 hours a day you got to listen to that and you got to you got to sit in that okay you have to sit in that think about what you've done in the past this is a great time for reflection these people really like fucking reflecting on things right that's what i was laughing about the other night he's like there's always talking there's always i'd like to talk about i'd like to talk see the convoy there was minimal talk and a lot of doing. That's the difference of like a working class and this sit back and be like, we need to take response. No, fuck it. Just get shit done. That's what these guys did. They're like, we should drive our trucks to Ottawa and pack the streets with fucking trucks. One guy's like, hey, that's not a bad idea. What do you say we do it? Yeah, I'm in. You in? I'm in. You're in? I'm in. All right, fucking let's do it. Throw it on the internet. See how much uh, attention we can get here. And they did. They got the attention. It was like in the span of fuck, Jesus Christ, in three weeks' time, all these fucking trucks have occupied Ottawa. Every filled the streets. It's a party out there, for Christ's sakes. But then you have the other side that's like, I think we need to, I think we need to. There's too much I think and not enough, hey, we should we should, and then I'm in. I'd like to acknowledge, there's always acknowledgement. I'd like to acknowledge I'm on Treaty 7 land. Before we even get into this, there's a long list of acknowledgements. I thinks. The rednecks were just like, hey, we should drive our trucks to Ottawa. They're like, yeah, sounds great to me. Why don't we go right to his front doorstep? And fuck, there they are. Boom. Christ almighty. You have to applaud it. At the end of the day, you have to applaud it. Jesus. I'm a fan. I got to say, I'm a fan of like the disruption that's happening. And it's funny because you're, you're seeing like just weak, feeble, milk toast pussies standing on the side of the road that, uh, this makes me laugh too. This is like, it's a, it's, it's all an SNL sketch when SNL was good. That's what this is. Some guy goes to the dollar store, gets poster paper, does a little arts and crafts. What the fuck? All right. Little technical difficulty here. Google is just throwing me for... I, I'm having a day. I'm having a fucking day. I'm going to air my frustrations. First, this piece of shit fucking computer in the corner cuts off the audio halfway through the first time I try recording this one. Now Google just wants to irritate me. The world is just, see, this is what I mean. Like we were just talking about people getting irritated by things. Now, because I enjoy watching people get irritated, it's almost like AI technology is just listening in all the time. They're like, hey, yeah, you know what I'd really love is a an L-shaped sofa for the living room. Now you're getting served ads. Now I talk about, hey, I like it when people get fucked with. Now I'm getting fucked with. These robots got to be stopped. The internet is taking over. Our minds are melting. Uh, speaking of which, which makes me laugh, um, is uh, I seen this video of like a, a quote unquote counter protester who was like, yeah, I went outside and gave him a thumbs down. I don't like this. And she she's like I, I walk outside and I'm wearing a mask and they're harassing me and calling me hateful things listen lady this is the generation that Gen X is so proud that oh yeah we didn't really care I let my kid fucking you know millennial parents you too this is what you've created is a bunch of fucking pansies you can't even be 
can't even handle being catcalled for a second. Hey, wearing your mask outside? What are you scared? You know, can't even be mocked for a minute without going to the news to be like, they're saying hateful things about me. It's pathetic. My God, crying on national television because you got heckled. Give it a fucking rest already. You produced this, okay? Nobody can say anything but you. You allowed your children to like think that they're so great, so noble, and so wonderful that they deserve the participation medal. And now the fact that somebody is out there in their streets causing a little bit, a uh, little bit of disruption, if we will, like uh, Google's doing to me. Now, all of a sudden, now, all of a sudden, oh, I don't get my way. I'm, an, I'm frustrated. I hate everybody. They're rude to me. They use this like victimhood as, a, as like a crutch to get them through this next little portion of life. Like we're all supposed to stop what we're doing and come rub you. It's going to be okay. Shut the fuck up. You're a grown adult. How would you like it, Hack, if there was air horns outside your house all day? Well, I would love it because I know that somebody out there is making some fucking noise. And by the looks of it, I'd be going down there for a meal, hitting the bouncy castle, playing a little hockey with them. You know, fuck work. Who gives a shit? Do you think your job gives a fuck about you? No. No, the government doesn't give a shit about you. So why do you care so much? Why? You should be down there, get a bowl of chili, hang out, go dance. Christ, you haven't lived in two fucking years and you want to sit there with your nose pressed against the pane of glass that you uh, have right next door to your patio and pressed against there and look down upon these people as if you're superior to them because you rent a fucking one bedroom apartment in Ottawa that costs you three grand a month. Oh, you're better than everybody. Now, all of a sudden that there's noise and disruption and you face like adverse. I wouldn't even say adversity. I would just say like any sort of like. Uh, any any sort of narrative that you don't believe in now is like protesting out in your streets and you're upset because this isn't right. This isn't right. I don't like this. Where's my dad? Why isn't my dad here to save me from these evil, evil men that are offering me chili every moment that I walk out of my house and they make fun of me for wearing a mask in public while nobody is surrounded by me? I'm literally the most safest I could possibly be in an open air atmosphere without a human being within 30 feet, but here I am, like the retard I am, I'm going to go cry on CTV because the noise, the noise, for two years, two years, you've been told a bunch of crack, uh, there's like crackpot bullshit, and now, now two weeks of noise, this is it, this is what's going to cause you to cry on television, I haven't seen my family in two years, go visit them, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? Honestly, pathetic losers. I can't stand them. Dead beats. Ooh, Ooh, I can't believe I walked outside with my mask on and someone called me a fucking idiot. Good. You deserve to hear that. You need to hear that. You know, for too long, everybody sat around and said, you're beautiful. You're gorgeous and you can be whatever you want. And all three of those things are false. You've been living a lie, lady, and now you're facing that lie because now you realize like, oh shit, maybe maybe I don't matter as much as I thought I did. Maybe maybe I am an idiot. And you got to look in the mirror and slowly start to figure out that, oh my God, Jesus Christ, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. What could I be mad at? What could I lash out at? Oh, I know the truckers. They're making too much noise. I can't sleep. I'm going to go lose my tits. I'm going to lose my tits. Instead, you could just fucking let your hair down, live a little, go to the dance party. Christ, it's the most, they're giving the, aux, uh, the auxiliary cord to immigrants. They're playing fucking Punjabi MC for the boys. Everybody's dancing. You could go sing a uh, little Twisted Sister with everybody. We're not going to take it. And God forbid if you need a coffee, every fucking 15 feet, somebody's handing out free coffee, you know? altvape.ca slash hack 10 free same day delivery within two hours from Edmonton and Calgary 
The Alt Vape also has a recycling program, empty pods, e-liquid bottles, coils. All used vape products can come back to any of their locations. Our commitment to our communities by using youth usage via patron scan ID verification. That's altvape.ca slash hack10. And you can also use that code in person at any of the locations for Alt Vape. They will also give you a uh the same discount but they would thoroughly enjoy if you drove your semi truck in front of their locations and blared the horn for 14 hours they would really enjoy that they're lacking any sort of public communication very tone deaf around uh alt vapes place you know so i would probably go in there and disrupt it maybe tone deaf wasn't the right I, they're deaf they're definitely deaf i know that but to go into one of their locations and purchase something and then go sit in the parking lot and blow an air horn, you know, make some noise. They want that. They need that. There's a what there's a location here in Edmonton right off White Ave. They would love nothing more than if you sat there in a semi truck and blared the air horn for 10 hours from open to close. They would love that. I know they would. Altvape.ca slash hack10. Next, we have the Shoddy. Shoddy is a revolutionizing jewelry. Next, we have the Shoddy. Shoddy is revolutionizing jewelry one Shoddy at a time. The necklaces are multifunctioning. Fun the necklaces are multifunction and a conversation starter. These incredible shotgun necklaces have a shotgun tool built in every pendant. The quality necklaces will tear through beer cans and create a perfect hole every time you guzzle down your drinks. For everyone listening right now, we are offering a special discount code for you. Use DANGERCATS20 for 20% off your next purchase at theshoddy.com. They've got everything from a Canada design, ooh, to a mullet man shoddy. These beauties at the shoddy on Instagram or follow these beauties at the shoddy on Instagram and you'll see why you need this. And after you punch a hole in your can, you can fuck it. It's a fucking, it's a goddamn experience. Jesus Christ, it's like Burning Man out there. It's the Canadian version of Burning Man. We should do this once a year just to make sure the government, you know, this is our form of protesting. Is just everybody gather, have a fucking party. A two-week party. Not a bad idea, right? Once, you know, every now and then, just surprise them. Pop up for two weeks, making an occupation. Don't ever tell, don't tell anybody that you're all coming at once. Don't come at once. Park one truck, then another, then another, then another. The next thing you know, you've taken over the whole city. And there you have it. I, I, uh, fuck I don't know why I'm not heading this operation. You know what I mean? Who else Who else could we be mad at? Joe Rogan, you know? Joe Rogan, is he the, is he the next person? When, when, you're, when the truckers go home, is that where we all put our attention? Does anybody even care? You know? That's the funny thing. It's like nobody cares. It's always like, yeah, white people are bad. And this is why. You know? And take a bunch of clips that are out of context. Yeah, should he have not said the word? You know who's fucking laughing? If you just listen in the distance right now, who is pissing himself laughing from beyond the grave is Patrice O'Neill. And I know, like, ah, if Patrice O'Neill was alive, dude, that guy would be having a field day with all this shit. All of this is just exactly what he talks about even back then when he was still alive. It's hilarious. I love it. I love I love how uncomfortable. Jesus, now the laptop's dying. My fucking God. Maybe I need to talk, not talk so much shit, you know? That's what I need to fucking do. It's not talk so much shit. Laptop's dying. My brain's dead. I fucked up the first episode, which I was, like, pretty happy with. Is, is the... I felt like I got, I, I talked about a few things. I'm really excited. Now I can retrace the uh, fan question. That was fun. Very fun. 
But yeah, it is great, isn't it? It's it's so much fun watching people just a gathering, having a good time, just making noise. We haven't heard noise in a while. You haven't heard this level of noise in a long time. And I went down to the Edmonton one and it was insane. The level of noise that was barreling through the city was fucking fantastic. It felt great. My senses were like overloaded. There's people everywhere smiling, dancing, cheering. All walks of life. There's a Punjabi man handing out coffee and waters to everybody. Come, my brother. Come, 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 my brother. He loved it. He was having a great time. It was beautiful. All walks, all races were there. So I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking, I just laugh, you know. Jesus Christ, these people, they're out of control. It shows him blowing up a bouncy castle. My God. What a, what a pathetic fucking news organization. This is the news here in Canada. People are putting up goddamn, they're putting up goddamn bouncy castles for Christ's sakes out there. And I don't know what the hell to do. We need to shut the city down. This is out of control. They're having a chili cook-off today. There's a woman out there having a chili cook-off. What the hell is this? Shut it down. Insane. I'm, I've, listen, I'm also, like, don't take me as, like, a credible source for information. Christ almighty, I can barely string a sentence together half the time. And here I sit, I scream in a room by myself, looking at news articles, you know, looking at washed up Canadians like f fucking Neil Young. That is the funniest one, you know, that <laughs> that is by far the funniest one. Uh, how do I get this up? Give me one second here. Get this fucking shit out of here. All right. No, no, no. Okay. This is hilarious. I find this so funny. This guy. This is the guy that's going to take down Joe Rogan. Okay? This is the guy. All right? Neil Young. I thought COVID killed all of the geezers. That's what I thought would happen. I thought COVID would have taken... This guy out. Let's get that over. Come on over here. Old Papa shit fucking whiskers. Look at this guy. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the jowls on this old bitch. Why are Canadian musicians such cucks? All of them. Drake, Justin Bieber, Nickelback. Who else? Some 41, Avril Lavigne. Is there like, can we just put one out there that breaks into America? Can we just put one out there that will break into America that isn't just a giant pansy? Look at this guy. Old stupid fucking, he looks like, um, he looks like the guy, you know, Neil Young looks like the guy that every horror film has at the beginning you know where where the the, the people that are going to be killed in a, f a horror film always stop at like a gas station and there's always a ah where are you kids going you know oh we're going up uh we're just up here from you know wisconsin we're gonna go camping it's gonna be so much fun ah coming up from wisconsin hey where are you staying Oh, cabin, t cabin 10, just up the hill there. Ah, cabin 10. Nobody's been there for at least 25 years. Interesting. They always leave like something like that lingering in the air. That'll be twenty four ninety five, please. And for the fuel, that's an extra 20. Uh, okay. So 40, 45, $46 rounded up. That is correct. Enjoy your stay in Iowa. And then they veer off into the distance, and there's always him standing there looking at him, you know, and, and like gives you that cliffhanger, like, ooh, did we just meet the, the killer? Did we just meet the killer? Or how is he involved? That's what he looks Neil Young looks like that now. 
I think it's so funny that he was like, listen, listen, Spotify, either remove Joe Rogan, who you just paid $100 million for, or I'm going to take off uh, walking in the desert with a horse with a name. <laughs> That's not even a Neil Young song hack. I know. That goes to show nobody fucking can keep... Listen, besides keep on rocking in the free world, can you name any other songs? No. No, you can't. I can't. I'm not a Neil Young fan. I could care less for his music, but it's so funny that this old fossil thought he's going to dust off an LP from 1976 and be like, either you take this or you drop Joe Rogan, say. You either take this or you drop an old rogie. We're not playing games around here anymore. Either you want a little rocking in the free world or I'm taking this off. Jesus Christ. Gave it a rest. Get this guy off my screen. What a pathetic fucking loser. This is why, like, don't, Canadians, why? Why do you have to be so dumb, you know? This is why when, when I say that Canadians are retarded, it's it's guys like this that just take it to the level that, that just proves my point every time. You know, we are a dumb, docile, dipshit society. I will say it. I will admit it over and over again. Look at me, for instance. Do you want this infiltrating America? Of course you do, because we need to clean up our image a little bit. Drake, I love my bed, my mom, I'm sorry, gay you know, Biebs, Biebs came around. Biebs came around. In the beginning, we were all like, eh, fuck this guy. Fuck, he's an asshole. I'm not about it. Fuck that little dweeb. And then he came out and he's like, I get my peaches in Georgia. I get my weed from California. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Colonifornia is where you get your weed now, Biebs. Come on. Get your shit together. Nickelback, most hated band on the planet for some reason. Their music does slap. Let's be honest. They're no creed, but it's okay. Uh, who else? Celine Dion, National Treasure, you know, that's Vegas's girl right now, and you're welcome. You can rent her for a minute, but just remember, that's our girl, okay? That's the only French woman that we prop up to the degree that we do here in Canada, all right? Shania Twain, I guess. Other than that, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why is Neil Young thinking that he can, this is the delusion that happens here in Canada, because this, for the American listeners, this is what happens with Cana uh, Canadian entertainment, Canadian media, uh, the CRTC makes it so that way 60% of the content that you consume on any, like, radio, television needs to be Canadian produced, okay, that's why when you come up here and you start listening to the radio, you're like, this sucks, you're right, it does, I agree, but, these idiots up here get this complex because their music's being played over and over and over again, right? That they, uh, that they're a star, right? For those that don't know, Jan Arden is on Twitter right now, wondering like, oh, so if I take a, and if you don't know who Jan Arden is, a quick Google search and you'll get it over with. It, I can't even explain to you. Another musician who thinks she's bigger than she actually is. Ah, oh, I want a Juno. What the fuck is a Juno? You don't know that you're not a fucking star outside of Canada. That's what a Juno is, okay? Outside of this metropolis of the frozen tundra who has the, the population of the state of Texas, okay? There is open micers in Texas that go and strum their guitar that are more popular than any Canadian musician will ever fucking be. And these idiots, they hear their music that's uh, taking up 60% of the airwaves here in Canada because it's law, get this complex in their head that there's something that they are not. Okay, far from the diva that you think you are, but she's on Twitter. Ow, oh, what if a, a horse girl of all things, a horse girl? What if we need to save the horses? We're we're shipping horses away for slaughter. What if I was to go park a horse trailer with horses in front of Parliament? Well, nobody would sh nobody would show up. Okay, maybe fifteen. Have a chili cook off. Bring a bouncy castle, you idiot. 
Are you not seeing what's happening? Take a moment, step back, get off your high horse in your fucking single bedroom apartment downtown Toronto that you're paying an ungodly amount of. That's me assuming, me assuming, okay? Because if, apparently when you go higher up in an apartment complex, some like what I don't know what happens in your head. It just gets bigger. I think like the lack of oxygen that high up, maybe. I don't know what it is. The altitude starts to make your head inflate slightly. The pressure, I don't know. Is there like a pressure that pressurizes your body and it forces it to your brain and you start becoming a little more delusional? I don't know. That's a good uh, study that, that some scientists should do. But this fucking idiot. Oh, what if I brought a horse trailer down to Parliament Hill? Do it. No one's stopping you, you fucking twat. You idiot. Bring a bouncy castle. 24 donuts from Tim Hortons and a few hockey sticks to have a goddamn street hockey game at noon. Then maybe somebody might give a shit what the hell you're up to. But until then, until then, just fucking pipe down. Okay? Canadian artists are just a bunch of pussies. All of them. A good portion of them. I have yet to see any single one of them that were, you know, like America, you got, you guys got artists, okay, with true backstories. You know, like the baby, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Doja Cat, you know, get a Doja Cat. Why is Doja Cat not saying, hey, Joe Rogan, take it down or you get no Doja? Because she's not a fucking idiot. That's why. She's making her money. She's happy. She's young. She's probably getting young, hot dick, touring the world. She's big, shaking her big fat ass to losers like me that'll watch. You know, she's got a made in the shade. That's why. Not these Canadian artists. Christ almighty, you go down to like O'Malley's Pub on a Tuesday, you might catch a Jan Arden show. But somehow, you know... <laughs> Well, why is nobody listening to me? Because we've been forced to, you know, you know how Spotify didn't force feed a Apple or uh, a YouTube album down your throat. You remember when they didn't do that and iTunes did? That's the Canadian radio for you. 60% of the music produced here in Canada is fucking trash. The ones that you have, you are forced to listen to. You have to listen to this shit. It's garbage. It's garbage. Fill up the radio waves, you know? And then in the intermission, you know, the, if you think the music's bad, wait till you hear radio DJ hosts here. Holy fuck. Well, we got a fake prank phone call that we're going to play. We told Jim that we took his dog for a walk. It lost him, but instead we showered, bathed him, and uh, but Jim, we lost your dog on the walk today. What? You lost my dog? That's the shit that you gotta f sit through, just so you can hear Neil Young's rocking in the free. The fuck does Jan Arden even sing? Or Buck Cherry? There you go. You want to listen to Buck Cherry? Hey, you're all crazy, bitch. You know. Oh, they're not even Canadian. They're from Anaheim? Jesus Christ. They tour Canada more than anybody in the fucking world. This guy just, every every time he pops up, he's like, hey, go on a Lloyd Minister. Jan Arden. This pig from Calgary. Okay. Um, okay, by the looks of it, hasn't had a hit song since 1994. There's Canadian entertainment for you. That is Canadian entertainment for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hasn't had a hit song since 1990. Her and Neil Young are going to start touring together, and they're going to play all their greatest hits. It's a greatest hits tour. And the best part of the tour is the greatest hit is going to be them <laughs> being hit with the last scoop of fucking dirt that hits their coffin. You know, that's the good. That'll be the greatest hit. God almighty. Get these dinosaurs out of here. Time to fucking clean slate. 
Like, why didn't this virus wipe most of these assholes out? That I don't understand. God almighty. 1992, singer-songwriter. Okay. Oh, she's an actor? In what? She, oh, she's got her own TV show. Oh, my. Oh, she did a opening segment on Ellen back in 1997. Okay. Give it a rest. It's over. Done. Finito. Wrap it up. Put a bow on it. All right. Let's get into this fan question. Okay. Hey, uncle. Love the pod. Got a question. I have two cousins and a little while ago, the younger cousin slept with the older cousin's wife, which would be, which would be his aunt through marriage. While he was away working, this all took place and he found out about it. He was waiting to get revenge on his own nephew, but he recently passed away due to an accident. Yay! Part of the family still allows him around and acts like he did nothing wrong. It boils my fucking blood, as it should. So bad. Should I take responsibility in my own hands and give him a beating when the time is right? Or should I let karma do its thing? It fucking pisses me off how he runs freely now and fucks people's women and gets away with it. He's a low life. He's got kids of his own. He has nothing to do with. And he got with his aunt through marriage and is around her two kids, but has nothing to do with his own. It pisses off a lot of people. Uh, it pisses a lot of people off, but nothing has happened to him yet. If putting yourself in my position, what would you do? All right, my brother. He asked to stay uh, anonymous in this, so we will respect that. Because that's what we do in this show. We respect people and their opinion, okay? And their requests as well, not just their opinions. <laughs> we respect opinions here. But what would I do? Okay, listen, I'm glad that you haven't got violent yet. Because that's one way to have everybody turn against you and be like, oh, he's the bad guy. Look at him, he's the bad guy. Look at him, he, he threw a punch. He's a bad, bad boy. And you don't want that. See, you got to... Unfortunately, nowadays, wars aren't fought with violence. It's fought with information. And that's what you need to do here. See, I have a well-thought-out plan that I think that you should use, okay? It's going to test everybody's waters, where they sit, and it's going to require you to be a little uh, stronger, um, smarter, and quick on your feet reacting to uh, what happens here, okay? So what you need to do initially next time you're at a family function you know what pretend things are all good don't get drunk either don't get drunk you don't want alcohol fucking this up okay so in your in in your sober sane mind you need to go up to the to the wife say something out of pocket you know because uh, she's got a little bit to blame on this as well you know you can't just let him slide through like he's uh, he's the evil one. It takes two to tango here. So by getting them both, this is what you do. You go up to the wife, say something out of pocket and be like, you know, it, 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 whatever the, uh, the, the deceased fella's name is, he was a good guy. And the fact that you're fucking this loser just goes to show how, how big of a stun cunt you are. Something along those lines. You can... You can uh, put your own verbiage in there, but something along those lines. It's like, fuck, you must be just a dumb whore. And give it, like, just lay into her, all right? Because this is going to test two things. First off, you know for a fact she's going to run to him and tell him what you just said, right? So that's going to that's gonna spark some sort of reaction. You're trying to draw this out of them, okay? It's like when Russia and China use their fucking Twitter bots to send all the, the Looney Tunes fucking crazy with new articles and all these narratives and they just keep pushing the bot farm to keep us unstable, keep us insane. So that's what you're doing right now. You're muddy in the water. See where he sits. Because he's got... He's only got two options. He's going to confront you about it or he's going to have to feel real fucking awkward and stupid and sit in that. And if he does that, you're one leg up. Now you can start doing some kind of do some petty shit for a while. 
That's what I bring pettiness back. I like pettiness, okay? Even when it's used against me, I enjoy pettiness. I do. I think it's a good trait to have in certain circumstances, and this is one of them. So I think that uh, first off, you do that. Secondly, go get some pictures of uh, the the wife and in, in the the I guess the, the I'm just gonna call him the dead guy, the wife and the dead guy. Get some pictures of those two printed off and start planting them in houses. Okay, you know. Start uh, putting them on fridges so that way people are going to start to notice that his face becomes familiar and then they start to see, oh, what a piece of shit. Don't be the guy. You can't be this guy. This is, this is something that happens in my family. Nobody likes to confront one another, but they'll run to everybody around and try and t- get a big team. You know, They try to get a team going so that way everybody can shame, shame, shame. Whether they're right or wrong in the situation, that's what they all love to do. They, they'll avoid talking about it, but they'll run to everybody and be like, he's a cunt, he's a cunt, he's a cunt, he's a cunt, and try and get as many team members as they possibly can before uh, going on the attack and start getting into arguments. And they'll do the, I don't know what you're talking about. They'll play those cards, you know, just deranged fucking psychopaths, narcissists, and fucking wing nuts. Okay, wing nuts. They're all of them. All of them are fucking wing nuts. All right. So don't do that, because that just causes a bigger divide. It's you versus them. Okay. So don't be running around to everybody, but you just plant little seeds. Because what you're doing, you you you're not trying to get team members. You don't let anybody know that you're doing this. Just let those pictures pop up. And then let, don't let them, you've aired your frustrations to the wife. So now she knows, oh shit. Oh boy. We got some, we got some heat on our hands and let's see how they handle the heat. Cause either he's going to have to step to the plate and be like, what did you say to my woman? What did you say to my old lady? Okay. And then that gives you an opportunity to play. You got to be quick on your feet here and however you want to play it. You can get aggressive, but I say outsmart them. You obviously know more about them than I know, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to show you the roadway, show you the path on how to destroy this guy. Because if he's a deadbeat, you know, if he's a deadbeat, he's got two kids of his own, he's not doing anything with them, and he's slowly around. What's she like, though? Is she a fucking... Is she just one of one of these deadbeats that 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 makes sense why these two are together? Is that what's happening here? We do have to applaud him though, because it does take a little bit of game to talk your uh, your you know your cousin's wife to fuck you. That that ta- that requires a little bit of game and a little bit of sluttiness on her part. So they're both they're both guilty, but it does take. You know, like you can be like, oh, this is definitely a small town. This is a small town issue because in a city, there's just pussy everywhere. You can go out and you can find pussy. You can order pussy, right? You don't need to go and fuck your cousin's wife because you haven't had a different hole in a while. You know, this is definitely a small town issue. So the city kids are scratching their head. Well, why didn't you just get a hooker? Go down to the massage parlor and get jerked off for a hundred bucks. It would have cost you way less and caused you way less problems. Yeah, the cost would be less and way less problems. It's a good point. It's a good point, hack. But these are the issues that you have ahead of you. Is like now, you're going to cause a division in the family because they're going to. Some are going to be like, "Oh, it's okay. We side with him." You're gonna. You're gonna. There's going to be some allies and axis happening here. It's a little bit of fucking modern warfare. So you got to you got to attack with information and you got to you got to move swiftly and and uh, quietly and also deliver hard blows when you do strike, okay? And it all revolves around you just outsmarting him. By taking the 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 steps by saying that to the wife, then you test on where he's at um as a man, because you don't, you know, no fucking way. Any dude that actually loves his old lady would let some guy sit there and talk some shit straight to her face, you know? 
No fucking sane man that actually loves his old lady would do some shit like that. So there, you're seeing where they sit, okay? Are they just together because it's convenient? Muddy the waters. Make her start thinking. He's a deadbeat. What a fucking loser. And you should be ashamed of yourself as well. And say some off-the-cuff shit right to her. And then you see how they react. Violence is the last option. That's the last option. You got to fucking decimate this guy's brain so that way he's always... You want him laying in bed, staring at the roof, questioning on what type of human being this guy is. That's what you want to do. Destroy him mentally. Physically, wounds heal. We all know that. But if you can mind fuck him... That's next level. That's female shit. Take the female playbook. Don't try and hurt them or try and break their ribs or, you know, that, that you're going to heal and you get over that. And sometimes that's what dudes just need is a good old fucking fist fight and we're over it and let's move forward. But this, this is kind of fucked up. And I say take the female approach and try and decimate him mentally. Fuck with him. You know, fuck with him. I wish I knew more about the guy on uh, ways that you could, but I, I believe uh, you only possess those answers. You literally are the only one that possesses those answers on how to, you know, kind of manipulate his thinking. This is some psychopath shit. I'm, I'm really telling you to be a psychopath for a little while, but if it's pissing you off that bad, you know what? There's... What are you going to do? You're going to go, you, you can't go anywhere. You, I assume you're in Canada. I'm going to assume you're a Canadian. So you can't go anywhere. You got to have the vaccine passport. Some of your friends can't go. Some can. Like right now, does anybody really give a shit to go out? Not really. So occupy your time by trying to decimate one of your fucking enemies mentally and physically is the last option. Do not resort to fighting right out of the gate. Because you got some work to do. You got some shoveling ahead of you. Dig the grave and then put them in it. Essentially is what I'm saying. Hypothetically speaking. I'm not saying go out and kill the man. I'm just saying fuck with him. Twist with him mentally. Get inside his own head. It's good for everybody. It's great for everybody. I don't think that there should be an issue at all with that. Quite honestly. I do find it, I, I, that's a, I, you know, people are weak. We used to, I, I liked when confrontation was a-okay. Like you had to face the music sometimes. And this guy's just skirt. Everybody just like, oh yeah, no, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. No. The guy's a fucking scumbag and your whole family's just sitting back and being like, ugh. And some people are pissed about it. They won't say jack shit to anybody. What the fuck, man? So yeah, take it into your own hands for a moment. Do do a little research. I say start with that move though by by taking a stab at the old lady, and I don't mean like trying to fuck her. I mean like trying to get the mind twist going. You know, play the mind games for a while. Get inside his head. Have him fucking lose sleep. That's what you want. Drive him further into a, 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 this like insanity that he allows himself to live in and I'm decimated go for it I like that it's an information war not a physical war it's not a hot war it's an information war right that's what you need to do and you better hail oh, you you gotta pray that your your ducks are fucking squeaky clean and in a row my friend because if you're gonna go down that path you gotta be ready you gotta be like these uh uh, who, who, like, like, like these valley girls that can play these mind games with dudes? You got to think like that. You got to think like, uh, think like a stripper. You know, they're able to convince dudes that they're in love with them, and they just hand them money, hand them money, hand them money. You think like that. That's why I love going to the strip club, and just it fascinates me. These these ladies are able to hustle. And just sell lap dance, sell a dance, and have you think that you're on cloud nine, you're gonna get your dick sucked. You know, it's uh it's a great day to be you. 
That's what that's what they have you thinking. Oh, hey, come to the hotel room after. Yeah, you bet, babe. I'll be there. I had so much fun with you. You know, you got to think like that. Think like a stripper. Attack like a stripper on the male brain. It's very easy to do. Set them up. Set them up with some bullshit. But create a fake account on Snapchat and uh, fucking bait them into basically fucking ch- like talking about cheating. There's many ways of doing this. You got to think like female tactics here. Create a fake Instagram account. Start liking his photos. Bait him in. Bait him into a conversation. And then uh, attack, 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 attack. Always be on offense. Always throwing blows or get or sucking him into a trap. You know, that's how you got to do this. Vindictive, mean, go for the win. Always go for the throat. All right. And I hope that information helps you out tremendously, young man, because I feel like you're going to need it. I feel like you just needed the push to go to that extra mile. And here we are today delivering you some sound advice, I will say. Some very, very sound advice. And I don't think that for a second you should stray away from this logical plan that is, you know, is it a little out there? Is it a little crazy? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. I'm not the judge of that. All I do know is that it is well worth taking a stab at this little plan that I drummed up in my head for you. Do it. And you're probably going to think like, oh, heck. Why would you act like such a bitch about this? Why wouldn't you just beat him up? Because, like I said, a bruise goes away, okay? When you strip somebody of of all their shit, kind of think of like how the government just put the restrictions in front of people and stripped them of their businesses and ruined livelihoods, and then they just shrugged and go, hmm, do that, do that. Nobody's going to judge you. What's a, it sounds like your family's a bunch of pussies anyway. What are they going to do? Shame you? Sounds like they won't even do that. You don't even have anybody to fucking push back against you. So you're in the clear. You're in, you're in, this is World War Three. It's an information war and you got to be 10 steps ahead of this idiot. He sounds like a fucking bozo by the sounds of it, you know? Sounds like a scumbag that would be that would fall for a trap. If he does drugs, plant some on him. Call the cops. If he's drinking and driving, call him in. Get a DUI. Then he loses his vehicle. If he gets a DUI and he's out driving, call it in again. Be a piece of shit back to him. Be an asshole. Instead of sticking your nose, sounds like he caused a big disruption in the family. So what? Sometimes karma is you and you get to be the karma. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I don't know. Maybe I am a little crazy. (laughs) It is kind of funny to think of like someone just going to those lengths of fucking just really fucking twist with this guy. That'd be hilarious. If you do do so, please, please, by all means, DM me again the end results of like what happens with all of this because I'm very intrigued to know how this all plays out. I really, really, really do want to (laughs) know. Holy shit. But yes, that is my advice for you, young man, young lady, whoever you are. You're completely anonymous on this show, and I thank you for writing in. I certainly enjoy the fan questions that uh, I have been getting. They are fucking phenomenal. They're getting better and better every time. So if if you do have a fan question, DM me on Instagram at UncleHack69, not DangerCat69. DM me. Uncle Hack 69 on Instagram with your problem and I'll solve it. Yo, I got a problem. I'll solve it. Pull out your mic and let my DJ revolve. Anyways, thank you for tuning in for another, uh, for another episode of the Uncle Hack podcast. And we'll see you next week at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time every Thursday. And a quick reminder, there's an extra episode sitting and waiting for you on the Patreon. It's a fun, great way to support the channel. You know, extra episodes of this nonsense. I just talk more shit for another hour. So you get an extra episode every week and you get to support me. What more do you want? Right? All right. Good night.